This is my son James, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. He's very loved. Um, he is very funny, he's smart, he's creative, he's very family oriented, he really likes hanging out with us when he's not on his Xbox, and he cares for others a great deal, but he's not perfect. He has dyslexia, which means he doesn't read correctly, it's nothing he can control. He had braces, and you will see in some of these pictures that flash by that he has struggled with his weight, and that became one of the targets for his uh, being bullied. He talks a lot, and he has ADHD, and he struggles with that every single day. But he's soft-hearted, and all of these things combined made him a target, so he became someone who was bullied. He has two sisters and parents. He has chores at home. He really, really likes cadets. And his biggest thing now is Xbox because he feels connected to the other people that are playing. So he has friends at the high school that do the same thing. His early years in school were really difficult. I remember going to grade four, parent teacher, and the teacher said, some days I must say his name 150 times. James, sit down. James, please pay attention. James, put your book away. James, bring your book out. Where's your pencil? What's the book? And uh, at the end of one day, she apologized to him for saying his name 150 times. And he said, he said, that's okay. I know I'm bad. But he wasn't. He had all of these things that he dealt with on such a, a great level. Like he was always trying to be the better person. And then he came here. And all of a sudden, he wasn't, he couldn't hold it together as well as he could because it's puberty. Puberty, excuse my expression, it sucks. Who thinks puberty sucks? Here we go. Puberty is the worst time in your life. <laughs> well, actually, it's one of the worst times. If you're a woman later on, you get a thing called menopause, that's bad too. Okay. But what I'm telling you is this is all temporary. I joke that puberty is aliens coming and taking you away, I'm serious when I say this to you, and leaving something in your place that looks like you and sounds like you, talks and walks like you, but is definitely not you because you're in transition. You're in this crazy time of junior high where you don't know who you are, you don't know how to figure some things out, and guess what? You're trying to be popular with this group and then that doesn't work and you try to be popular with another group, and all you're trying to do is find out who you really are. So you make mistakes. Maybe you tell lies. Maybe you do things you're not proud of. Maybe you might bully another person, or you might join in with other people who are bullying other people. But that doesn't make you a bad person. What that makes you is, for lack of a better word, an uneducated person who might be a little bit in a stupid stage. So my son was in that horrible puberty alien years, couldn't find his way. But he also had friends who weren't really friends, and he had classmates who didn't feel good about themselves, so they picked on him to feel better about themselves. So grade seven hits. He starts school, and he is not happy. He arrives, and within the first two weeks, there is a group of people who decide to pick on him. And this isn't just little stuff. He was pushed, he was tripped. When people walked by his desk, they'd push his books off. He never told anybody. He came home one day and he had paint all down the back of his, I don't think it was a, a hoodie. And he said, oh, the paint spilled. Somebody spilled the paint on him. His books were written in, his clothes were made fun of. He was tripped a couple of times, he was punched in the sternum. He was called stupid, and a fat ass. And all I could think of was, how could anybody do this to somebody I love so, so much? Because it happens, and it doesn't happen because they meant to do it. There's six kids. He never said a word. This is the second week of school that started, and we heard about it at the end of January because two of the six kids were girls. And he was embarrassed to say anything because he couldn't 
handled telling his parents or his teachers that girls were making fun of him. So you have this situation where all of this stuff begins to build up. And in the mornings he'd say, I don't want to go to school because I really have this pain in my stomach. Or I have the wrong pants and I'm making fun of my pants. Can you please buy me new pants? Or I just, I don't want to go. Can I just stay with you today? And you didn't get it because you just thought, well, wow, he's in those alien years and you know what? What is he going to do? He's going to tell you he doesn't like school because school, well, in junior high for me sucked too. So, yeah, he's just being a normal kid and you push him out the door with his lunch and just think that this is normal teen stuff. And then my husband picks him up in January and he was staying after school and uh, I think he was in card club. And my, when my husband picked him up, he said, like he did every day, how was school today? And for the first time, he broke down and said, I don't want to go back. Everything came out, and my husband marched him inside to Pat's office, and Pat said, well, I can't deal with it right now because there's a big flight on the bus, and I have to deal with that, but come back first thing in the morning. Because this is what junior high is. People trying to interact, not doing it well, and administration having to kind of navigate that. So we knew and we knew she was serious. So, things began to change, but it didn't happen overnight. They made arrangements for a wonderful thing called mediation to happen, but James had to be the one to say it was okay. Every parent, guardian, foster parent, grandparent, whoever was the caregiver, had to be involved. We had to be involved, school administration, Every individual parent had to meet us once, but we had to have six meetings. So it took like four and a half weeks or five weeks for us to be able to get through that. That was pretty scary for the kids. They were scary for us too. There were two ringleaders, and the four others were really just hanger-ons. Each meeting began with James explaining everything. So the first time when he explained everything that happened to him and how it made him feel, I cried. And I thought, we got in the car that night after our meeting, and I said to my husband, oh, thank God, that's over with. I wanted to cry again. But every time he heard it, I couldn't help. So that's my boy. Think of the person that you love most in the whole wide world. Think of the person that you wouldn't want anything to happen to. Could be your little sister, could be your mom, could be your grandmother, could be this person that's your best friend and been with you for everything and gotten you through some really rough times. And imagine all of those things happening to them. Punched and pushed, paint dumped on them, told them they were stupid, that they were fat, that they were worthless, really. And to carry them around for almost six months and not be able to talk about it. It's a huge weight. My son didn't carry a little extra weight. He carried a ton for all of those six months. And it hurts. When we sat in those meetings, first it was him explaining to everybody what happened. Then it was us explaining to them how it made us feel. And then it was the bully's turn to talk to us. I never hated any of those kids for a second. I remember junior high. I remember I wasn't a very good person then and I was trying to navigate, and I knew they were trying to navigate too. But that did not diminish what they did. Every kid talked about what happened to them, how they got involved in that bullying. Many of them who couldn't express how they got to that point of wanting to actually do something to hurt him. But as you got to know some of the conversations that happened, one family where the son was involved, they were going through a horrible divorce, and the family was split, and the person had just moved. Another person um, really didn't fit in well and was trying to fit in, and that's why they did it. Another person didn't even know their father had been bullied. And when this came home, she all of a sudden discovered that one of the people she loved most in the world had people do horrible, horrible things to him in high school. So do you think it stopped after we did that? Raise your hand if you think it stopped. It didn't, did it? No. One more incident after that with those group of six. So the group of six, when we sat down with them every time, every meeting, at the end of it was, what are you going to do to stop that? And I thought, oh, please, you know, they're gonna say what they wanna say just to get out of the meeting, but it was true. 
One of the things they said was, well, when I see somebody else doing it, I promise I will stop it. So fast forward three weeks after all this is done, and they're in gym. And remember, I said my son had a hard time with his weight for a couple of years in junior high. Well, he's jogging in the gym. And the girl, who's the ringleader, jogs past him. As she's jogging, what does she say? Fat ass. Keeps going. Yeah. The best part is the second girl ran after her like a shot. You know what she said to her? Do you really want to go through this again? We had to sit down and have meetings with our parents. I really don't want to be grounded, blah, blah, blah. And she just went up one side and down the other and said, you go back and apologize to him because I'm not dealing with this again. It had nothing to do with this being wrong, per se. It had everything to do with her not dealing with this again. But I was okay with that because later she will learn. This has taught her something. She knows what it was like for her dad. She knows what it was like for my son because she sat there and listened to me talk about loving this person more than anything in the world. But it didn't stop my life. My son was beaten up in the schoolyard the next year. Different kid, a totally different situation. But his friends went and basically said, what the heck are you doing? And pulled this kid off of him, marched him to the office, uh, went and found somebody, and that was a one-time deal because there was intervention. It didn't go on, and it was witnessed. I need you to be respectful enough of yourself to stop the disrespect of others. One of the kids that bullied my son comes from a very dysfunctional family that I all, I've had conversations with, with Pat about, and you, know, you almost want to adopt some of these kids. He's one of the kids that beat up my son wasn't loved at home. Didn't have anybody really, loved in a dysfunctional way, but didn't have anybody really that was worried about, did you have breakfast this morning? Do you have clean clothes? Let's go to bed tonight because you need to get up in the morning. He didn't have people who really, truly cared for him in a way he needed to be cared for. So if you, and then this is the thing, if you are bullied, tell somebody. But if you are also being the bully because your life is pretty crappy right now, and you can't find a way to make it better, you need to tell somebody to. It can help. It may not happen overnight. Our problems weren't solved overnight, but they were solved. And here's the thing. My son, who is this amazing kid, had the most horrible grade seven and an okay grade eight, and he went to high school, and all of a sudden things changed for him because it's a larger community, and there are more people just like him. This is now a memory to him. And even though things seem really wrapped up right now and everything is just, oh my, I'm falling in love for the first time, or oh, this girl likes me for the first time, and I really am not interested in that right now. And you know, I can't make it on the basketball team, or oh my leg, or you're dealing with stuff at home. My dad drinks, my mom doesn't want to be married anymore. This is crappy stuff that you have to deal with, and you're dealing with all of that in the middle of your body changing and your mind making all these connections and you trying to actually be the person you really want to be and trying to figure out who that is. So you have to remember that you've got to navigate these years well enough that it doesn't follow you. Okay? So the impact. Depression. I think my son was depressed. I know I was. <laughs> it was a horrible time for our family. Anxiety. My son had anxiety, he didn't want to come to school, he had a hard time dealing with a lot of things. Self-esteem, his self-esteem was probably this low. We tell boys all the time they can't cry. We tell boys all the time they have to be strong. You have to be a person first, or a boy or a girl second. Everybody deserves respect, everybody deserves to be able to feel respected, everybody deserves to come to school and not feel like they're being picked on. I need you to examine your conscience. I wrote a little something the other night related to all the stuff we went through. So I'd like you to think a little bit about some of the things we're gonna, we're gonna delve into here, okay? Do I see the real me? This is all directed at you. When I look at myself in the mirror, what do I see? Do I feel positive about the person that I am? 
Do I count my gifts and my talents instead of counting all of my faults and my shortcomings? Do I compare myself to others? Do I have a hard time recognizing the good that is in me? Do I dwell on the bad events of my life instead of all the good ones? Do I realize how much I am loved by others? Do I take the time? Do I take the time to talk to my parents or my grandparents or my foster parents each day? Do I share important things, the good and the bad that has happened to me in the last 24 hours? Do I ignore those around me who are asking me to open up to them? Do I tell the truth when I'm asked about how I am feeling? Do I allow myself to be loved by those who care for me? Do I push those who love me away? Do I realize that they do love me and they only want the best for me? And do I accept that help and that love? Do I understand? Do I take the time to understand how other people are feeling? Do I spread gossip because it will make me popular? Do I try to stop the chain of lies when I know something I've heard isn't true? Do I reach out to people who are hurting? Or do I ignore the pain because it's easier just to walk away? Do I show others that I do care? Do I realize that I can be a safe place for others when they are reaching out? Do I understand that I can be a shoulder for someone and share all of my own experiences, the good and the bad, in order to help someone else cope? Do I know that I can be someone else's lifeline? Do I work at connecting with others? Do I spend too much time in front of screens? PSP, Xbox, Facebook, my phone? Is my connection to technology impacting my connection with others? Do I spend quality time with people that mean the most to me? Do I pass off requests to go for walks, or drives, or visits with family and friends? Do I realize that these connections are important to my mental and emotional health? And do I realize these requests from, come from a place of caring that others simply want to spend time with me because I am interesting, I am funny, I am creative, I am intelligent, and I am caring. Do I know that I am a person that other people want to hang out with? Do I take risks? Do I stand up for what I believe in? Do I stop myself from saying something funny because it might also be something hurtful. Do I exclude certain people from my circle of friends? Do I stop someone from making fun of another person, even though it might not be popular? Do I act on my instincts to help others when it might not be the cool thing to do? Do I put myself in other people's shoes and try and understand what they might be feeling? Do I let myself bully others? Do I let my friends bully others? Would I want others to intervene if that were me? Do I believe deep down that I can make a difference? Do I understand that a person who bullies me isn't necessarily a bad person, but a person who's made bad choices? Do I reach out to not only the bullied, but the bully? And do I understand that morals and integrity and doing what is right will help me build character and allow me to become the person everyone knows I am? Honest, trustworthy, a person that does what is right and not what is easy, a person who grows up to be someone I can be proud of.
I think everybody in here is worthy of being who they want to be. And everybody here should remember that when they're going to open their mouth, put their hand up to push, or do anything. Because everybody here is somebody's kid. Everybody here is loved by somebody, and it hurts not just them. It hurts so many others. So I want to thank you for letting me talk to you. Um, and I encourage you, the people in this room don't just do marking. They don't just mark you wrong in things or right in things. They don't just tell you, you're not supposed to be in the hall, get down here. These people actually care. My son figured that out really quickly. But even the teachers, he used, you know, everybody has teachers that you love and that you hate. You don't really hate them. You just don't like what they give you in class, usually. Even the ones that he didn't really care for, cared for him. And you have to remember that. That's not just them saying stuff. They really believe it. Okay? So I want to thank you very much for letting me talk to you about my little journey. Thank you. And that pink day is every day, okay? <laughs>